Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of the 101. Today, I want to talk about one of my hobbies, cosplay. So, what exactly is cosplay? Well, cosplay is basically dressing up for a convention like you would, for example, on Halloween. The reason to do something like this, or why I enjoy doing it, is you get to play rock star for a day. You get to add to the ambiance of a convention. So what this does is you're bringing a character to life, and that's kind of where the hobby lies, is seeing if you could bring this character to life. You go to the convention, and like I said, you get to play a rock star. People want to come and take pictures of you, and also, too, good work is usually appreciated. So if you can make a character come to life, it's really pretty cool. To see people's reactions, a lot of fun. So, what do you need to know about cosplay? Well, first of all, first and foremost, if you've seen that show, Heroes of Cosplay, they make it sound like there's money in this. There isn't. You see these contests and you see the stuff that they were showing on TV and how these people, quote unquote, make a living doing this. Maybe one or two of them might. They might have a contract with some of the conventions. Other than that, it's like a Halloween contest. You're really not going to make money off of this. And if you think you are, I mean, keep in mind you got the cost of the con, uh, whatever money you're putting into your costume. The numbers don't balance out. So if you think you're going, you can go into this and make a living. If you can, great. More often than not, it's a hobby. You're not going to make the big money like they made it sound on television. It, it doesn't work that way. So, what do you need to know about cosplay? Well, first and foremost, okay, cosplay can be expensive. The thing about cosplay is it takes time, effort, and money. So I say that because when you start building these things, is little from starting from a basic costume to however extravagant you want to get, the materials add up. When you start putting these things together, things start to add up. Well, if something that costs $10 now, then you run out, you go get another $10. Next thing you know, you've got a $100, $200, $500 suit. Uh, that's not counting screwing up. That's not counting uh, just little embellishments that you didn't know you needed. That's what happens. So be aware, it takes a good amount of money most of the time. Even a basic costume, if you want to get a cheesy Superman costume, you're dropping about $50 to $80 just on something like that. So first you're starting with that. Time. How much time do you have to invest in this stuff? The stuff that I build generally takes a lot of time. Between painting, uh, I create from scratch. It takes about a year for me to build some of these things. So keep in mind, there's effort involved in some of this stuff if that's what you want to put towards it. And once again, effort. So if you don't want to put the effort towards it and you just want to throw on a you know, regular spandex suit or one of the muscle suits, that's great. Go for it. But keep in mind, usually the more effort, the more time, and unfortunately, the more money you put into this stuff, that's going to give you that rock star status that I was talking about. That's the one when people are going to stop you more often than not and take pictures because it's appreciated. The fans want to see that stuff. And the more realistic your stuff looks, the more you're going to get stopped and the more it adds to everything. And there are contests, so I mean, you can compete if that's something you want to do. But keep in mind, you know, there is a price. So, what else do you need to know about cosplay? Cosplay, uh, first of all, when you build these costumes, it's hard to maneuver in them a lot of the times. Even a basic suit, heroes don't have pockets most of the time. So when you put these things on, some of them are hard to maneuver. The bigger the costume, the harder it is to maneuver in. Uh, a lot of these things don't have pockets, so keep in mind, you're gonna probably wanna find a way to put your keys, your money, your wallet, get your ID, an easy way to do that. Uh, usually when I go to these things, depending on how elaborate my costume is, uh, just some of the basic costumes, there's always one person who is our spotter. Uh, what that means is you have just a person who can take pictures of you, what people want to pose with you, so you have a record of what you did. You have uh, getting water. I mean, you want to stay hydrated. A lot of these costumes, no matter how simple they are, they get very hot. There's a lot of people. You want to stay hydrated, so you're going to have to have people going for water. Uh, as silly as this may sound, being able to go to the bathroom. If you're wearing a big armored suit, could be a problem. Make sure you have access to put it on and take it off easy enough. So keep that in mind. So always have, a, have somebody that's going to be some sort of spotter. If you have a costume that's hard to see, you out of, you're obviously going to need someone to help you out. And like I said, the bigger the costume, the more spotters you're probably going to need to make sure you can maneuver the crowd, you don't hit anyone, no one hits you.
Sorry, forgot my lost my train of thought. Spandex. Spandex is a privilege, not a right. People, the guys here are laughing about this. Here's the thing about building costumes. Obviously, we are not all supermodels. We have a certain body type. We try. I try and build, and most people try and build to your body type. I'm not saying that if you want to be Superman and you don't have the build or whatever. Obviously, do it. Key again, have fun with it. But keep in mind, people when they see these characters, they want to see them look like these characters. That's just the nature of the beast. So, if you are doing any type of spandex, spandex does not forgive. So unless you can really rock it or put something underneath, just keep in mind, it will show pretty much any flaw you have. If you've got the body to do it, great. Uh, but that is just kind of a rule for spandex. And also for spandex, this is gonna sound like I shouldn't have to say it, but I will. For God's sakes, gentlemen, buy a dancer's belt. Wear shorts underneath because a lot of these costumes are very tight and nobody wants to know your religion. There's a thing called a dancer's belt. Just buy it, put it on, covers everything. Children are at eye level, just remember that. So please, 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 nobody wants to see that stuff. Ladies, too, if you can't rock it, you know, do, do what you can, cover it up. Or, once again, like a gentleman has a dancer's belt, you know, wear some nylons or something underneath because, once again, it is a convention and some of the stuff is unforgiving and it's just the way it is. Going back to body type. If you really want the stuff to look good, pick something that will fit your body type. I'm very skinny. I'm not going to be the Hulk. It's going to be very hard to do. What I do for my body type is I will build an armor. Armor is usually pretty good for most people. You can cover things up. You can shape it. You can make it look the way you want. So generally speaking, when you're kind of picking what you want, pick a body type. Also too, pick a character theme. When you're looking at the stuff, kind of figure out who you want to be or what type of character you want to be. And then fit your body type and then break the components down. Uh, what this really comes down to when you're building this stuff is breaking it down to basic components. Try and keep it as simple as possible. So whether you're building from scratch or you can always get a basic costume you buy at a store and you can embellish it. That looks pretty cool. I've done that with one of my suits. If you just add little bits and pieces, it makes it pop and it's real easy to do. So I will give you an example of some of the stuff that I do so you can just kind of see an example of ways you can go with this stuff. So over here, this is one of, from a program, it's called Pepecura Designer. What this is, it's a 3D modeling, and what you're doing, anybody can do this stuff. This is paper, that's all it is. It's origami on crack. You print this up in your printer, there's lines and numbers, you match them up, and you fold and bend until you have a shape. A lot of guys that you see in the armor at the conventions, do stuff like this. What they do is you start with a paper base. What I like to do is on the inside I'll put duct tape to reinforce it. I'll paint the outside and then I'll put a, a coating so it won't chip and so it won't um, get wet. So once again armor's hard to move in but anybody can do this stuff. It just takes a lot of time. So you can do something like that or you could fiberglass this which I don't recommend but if you have the capabilities and you know how to fiberglass, what these guys do, they come in, they fiberglass this, and you have a nice solid piece. Keep in mind too though, very hard to move in, but it's solid. This is from a something called a Pepecura Designer. It's a free program and people put out all kinds of files for these things if you want to build stuff. The file extensions are called .pdo files. If you Google it, you will find this stuff. Real easy to do. Here's another example. This was the basic Iron Man chest that I was working on. Kind of see what that looks like. So, same basic concept with this. The difference with this is I'm using that program, and what it does is it breaks down basic shapes. You trace the shapes onto foam, and then you glue the foam with hot glue. 
with hot glue. And there you go. It's a little easier to work with than paper because the shapes you're not, you're already using something that isn't completely flat. back's kind of falling off here, but you can see kind of like the back plate, how something like that, you would secure it with a Velcro. Foam is easy to move in. Once you, you seal this and you paint it, you seal this with a, um, a Mod Podge. Seals the foam, then you can paint it. But see, it's very flexible. It's real easy to move in this kind of stuff. And it uses the same program as the, as the paper one. So it's a, uh, the Pepicure program, it's just that people design the models a little bit different, and when you print it up, you're not going to be doing a lot of folding. They're going to be flat pieces that you simply glue together on the seams. If you can see some of that, some of this stuff. So that's kind of that. So you can make more complex designs, but once again, it's time, effort, and money. It takes quite a bit of time to make that. Not as much as these, there's not as much folding, but it takes that, and then sealing the foam, painting the foam but you get a more realistic product. So you can also, if you can sew, you can sew costumes. I've seen people do that. I don't have that uh, skill. And I wish I brought my other costume and I didn't. But I have an Iron Man that was a basic cheesy the muscle suits that you see. All I did was I added the chest plate. I added some lights, the helmet, went to a convention, got stopped every 10 minutes for people that wanted pictures because it made it pop. So even if you get a muscle suit, if you do something to it to make it pop, easiest way to do something, but it's cool. People appreciate it. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Um, those are kind of some real basic guidelines. Just like I said, have fun with it. That's key. And once again, the more realistic this stuff is, the more people are going to stop you. If you're not doing something, if you just want to go and go, that's awesome. And you're doing it for you, that's awesome. But really, if you, if you want to go there and expect people to take pictures with you and stuff they want the, they want it to look realistic or or just so larger than life you've never seen stuff like that that's those are the guys that get stuck it's really cool if you've never seen this kind of stuff at a convention live go check it out and once again there's costume contests at the end if you want to see the work that people have done see what people have been working on and most people if you want to stop and talk to them they will tell you how they built it, they're, they're happy to share. They're happy to stop for pictures. Uh, just one rule, if you do see people cosplaying and you're just one of, one of the audience, one of the, the people that are just going to the cons. One thing to remember, we put a lot of effort into this stuff and we know where the flaws are and how solid these things are. Before you go up to someone and you know take a picture or whatever, ask first because some of these things have a lot of parts. Sometimes our visibility can't be seen so we don't want to bump into you or have someone bump into us or if we have a cape make sure we don't get caught everyone will be happy to pose for pictures that's why we're there it's a good time but just ask first most people are real good about that but really don't come running up to someone and just jump in and get a picture because once again sometimes we can't see or we don't want you to get hooked on something that may be a loose piece so just be aware of it cosplayers are there for you we're doing this for the audience and you know our own hobby but just be aware of that so you don't end up getting caught or wrecking a piece that someone has worked a lot on so those are some real basics so if it's something you have an interest in jump into it it's it's really a fun hobby and your first effort may not be great you, you may fall and not do you know and, and take a lot of time and I've trashed many suits uh, it's how you learn. There is a learning curve. Some of this stuff is a little complex, but once you get it, you start going more and more and more. It, it really is pretty cool. You really can learn some cool things. There are a couple sites that I use if anyone wants to get started on this. As I stated earlier, I started with something called Pepicure Designer. It's at Tamasoft.com. It's a free download, and what it is, it's a 3D imaging program that People take 3D images, they break them down into paper format, 2D. You print them up in your printer and you fold them back together. And there's scaling involved and you'll have to kind of learn how to scale to your body. But that's usually the, the easiest way to, to do with the more sophisticated stuff. It's just very time consuming. 
Uh, the foam that I showed you, same idea. Or if you can see things freehand, foam is great. I don't have that ability, but if you can look at something and draw it freehand on foam and just put it together, that's awesome. Embellishing regular costumes with foam, also a very good idea. The other thing that you can check out is a site called therpf.com. These guys, all they do is costumes and props. I find a ton of stuff or a ton of ideas on how to do things, and the, the guys on there are amazing. Um, they just, if it's, if it's been built, it's on that forum. Or if not, you could leave a message and someone will get back to you and give you an idea or a link on how to get back to that stuff. Lastly, Google. Google's your friend. If you want to do an Iron Man suit, that's how I got started on this stuff. How to build an Iron Man suit. Boom. All kinds of stuff pops up. How to do Daredevil. How to do a cool Superman suit. How to do an alien suit. It's all out there. Whether or not it's within your skill set is another story. Some things I've run across, I'm like, I'm not touching this. But there are a bunch of different links and maybe you could find an idea from one and go, you know what? I get how they did that. I can break that down and make it myself. So that's an intro to cosplay. Hopefully there's some information you took out of this. Hopefully next convention you'll want to try something like this. And once again, have fun and don't be afraid to fail because you will. It's going to happen, but it makes it better. You, the next time around, you will know how to make a better costume and better and better, and you can get building to the stuff that you really, really like and some of the just incredible work that's out there. So once again, I'm Carrie from The 101. If you have any questions, I can be contacted at Carrie at gmail.com. Correction, Carrie at comicsremix.com. If you have any other comic book needs, go to comicsremix.com. All kinds of cool stuff on there. So hopefully you guys found this informative. And with Halloween coming up, feel free to use this stuff for Halloween. It's one of the reasons why I wanted to put this out there. So maybe you can make a costume at the last minute or embellish something that you didn't know you could before. So enjoy. Have fun. I'm Carrie from The 101. Stay geeky, guys.